So last time out on my new Oro Terra Seat gravel bike, I took it on its first ride. And if you saw the last video, you'll know I was hugely impressed. But I haven't given it a really full on test. So today I'm taking it on a longer bike ride with plenty more off road. So I'm up at Devil's Dyke now. That's Devil's Dyke behind me. And in front of me, I can see the sea. And I'm gonna hit the South Downs Way now for a little bit of off-road. Quite a lot of off-road, really. I'm gonna go west. I'm heading towards Shoreham. Tires are a bit hard. I'm gonna give it a go, but I'm probably gonna to have to let some air out there. Oh, these tires are like concrete. Too hard. I'm gonna take a bit of pressure out. Still a bit of a bone shaker, but it has improved taking a bit of air out. I probably need to do a bit of research and find out what the best pressures are. Anyone got any advice in the comments about what I should be running at? Anyway, it's a very nice day up here. Wind slightly behind me now, so getting quite warm. I'm gonna take this off. Well, that's the worst of the climbing over for a little while anyway. South Downs Way is very lumpy, but this bike climbs really well. I haven't done the research to back it up, but I feel like I'm faster on this bike than I was on my landing bike. Shortly be coming off the off-road, off the gravel, and hitting a bit of tarmac. Well, I'm soon going to be parting company with the South Downs Way, heading south on a road I've not been down before. Should take me into the back of Shoreham, where I'm going to look to pick up the Downs Link and head north again. A lovely view of that valley. As I say, never ridden on this road before. I did check the map before I came out. It does come out at the back of Shoreham. So I should be able to find my way back onto the Downs Link pretty easily, I think. This is the absolute beauty of gravel bikes. Cross the South Downs way off road, hit a bit of road now. Then I'm gonna pick up the gravel path and it just eats them all up. Well, I don't know if it eats up the off-road, it certainly can do it anyway. Well, I'm onto the Downs Link, onto some prime Sussex gravel. Kind of out of the wind here as well. Last time I was here, it was really sloppy and muddy, so I'm hoping it's a lot drier today. Keen observers amongst you will notice oh, I've got a new bag. It's made by wrist strap. Uh, it's 1.5 litres. I bought it myself. And for the first time in, I can't think how long I am riding without a rucksack. I think I've always ridden with a rucksack ever since I started cycling, but not today. And it feels very nice. 
this bike is absolutely lapping up the gravel. It loves it. So fast over this surface. I mean, this is good quality gravel. It's hard, it's flat. So it's easy riding. But it has made me think about this bike. Is this the bike, the bike to rule all? The one bike I need to do all surfaces. Is this the holy grail of bikes? It could do road well, it could do gravel well, it could do off-road. Well, I don't know how well it can do off-road yet. This is only my second ride, so I might be going a bit early, but I'm just wondering, is this bike gonna do pretty much everything I need? Probably need some more work on the off-road, get these tire pressures right. But I'm so impressed with this bike so far. Right. I'm starting to feel pretty hungry now. Been going mm, a couple of hours. Got about 30k. I do have some chocolate nuts in my little bag, but I'm really saving them for emergencies. So, next place I can stop and eat, I'm going to. Only savoury thing they had soup. Mm. But it's good. She did tell me what it was, but I've forgotten. Something about vegetables. I don't care. I'm starving. Wow, that was amazing. I don't think of soup as uh, ride food, but that really hit the spot. And the longer the ride goes on, the sunnier it gets as well. So I'm soon gonna be hitting Henfield, and then we're hitting some road. So I'm coming out of Hemfield now. And I'm trying to recreate the route I did with Jason the other week. He took me down some new trails I haven't been down before. And I'm just hoping I recognize them from memory and just repeat, this could end badly. like a dream through that single track there. It was perfect, nice and dry, quite flat, not too technical, smashed it. When I bought this bike, I got measured and fitted in the shop and they set my seat height. After taking loads of measurements, it felt spot on. So I said to him, can you just mark it some tape because it's never going to be this good again. Riding along, seat's not feeling quite right. Look down, I know why. You can just see the electrical tape sticking out. I might have lost that perfect height, but I do have the measurement so I can recreate it. Now, last time I was in Beacon Bikes, it was so busy that I didn't get a chance to show off my new bike to Tim and John. I'm sort of passing them on the way home. A little bit of a detour, not too bad. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to show off my new bike to them and maybe get an update from their burglary they had. Well, that's a nice bike. Do you like it? Where did you steal that? I, I stole it from uh, uh, Oro. From Ditchley. I think I've heard some, well, is, it, is it still the same shop? But yeah. It's not called Evans? Yes. Yeah, it's I think it's <laughs> So this is the wood from where they smashed through the shed to get the bikes? Yeah, absolutely. And these are the local bike clubs? That's right. So what, if you're, if you're a local cycling club, you can... Um... We, yeah, when they come in, we, we, uh, we give them a piece of wood ah. and some pens and say, <laughs> go for it, do your artwork. <laughs> And, what, and what's, what's the latest on the, uh, on the burglary? Any, any sign of any bikes uh, being recovered? Well, we, we, I mean, we found one up in Liverpool, but um, unfortunately police didn't want to do much, but um, yeah, the police are now involved, so that's good. Is that because um, of the BBC story? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've just been on the phone to them actually, so they're coming across to see us next week. Uh, have you sort of managed to source new bikes or what? 
We, well, we're obviously waiting to hear um, really insurance. So the loss of just has been, hopefully the report will be going through next week to the insurance company. And we've started talking to a couple of companies about getting some new bikes. Is that what so, they took, just a full suspension? No, they took, I mean, took 17 all in all. But, 17 um, bikes? Yeah, the, the five full suspension we had went. So we're looking, that's the priority to get those replaced. We've still yeah. got enough. And what about the local biking community then? Oh, supportive? they've been great. Yeah, really, really supportive. Um, you know, I mean, I think most of them have heard about it. Everybody's been in coming in. They, they say that they're, they're trying to sort of, you know, bring as many people as they can. Yeah. And, well, you were so busy when I was here the other day. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely ran. I know. I know. No, it's been good. It's been. Even. And I mean, it, well, you know, the other thing we've noticed is that cycling clubs are coming from further afield now. You know, we we we've been getting the Brighton Mitres and the, yeah. the Sussex Nomads and others for a while, but now we're beginning to get much further. Well, Crawley. You know, they're coming sort of 50, Angmer 60 in. miles and whatnot. Good to catch up with Tim and John. Blaze Beacon Bikes is sort of bouncing back from the burglary and uh, the community is sort of rallying around. Nice idea they got there using the timber that was damaged during the raid to create little labels up on the fence of the various cycling clubs. I'm going to have to get a muddy cyclist one up there. Tim also shared his comedy crash from earlier today. It's not that it's funny if it's people falling off his bikes, but I think it's more of the aftermath as he tries to get out of the mud. Here it is, enjoy. Yeah! There's a, I went straight into a log. As for my ride, I'm on the final leg now. Done 43k, probably about another 10k to get home. It's been a fantastic ride, the bike's been amazing. Is this the dual bike? Oh, maybe. I think the real test though will be taking it off road with my mates on mountain bikes, me on the gravel bike and seeing how it performs in that environment. But thanks for watching today and I'll see you on the next one.